Hi everyone out there in pottery land. We're gonna do this uh, project. We're on to Christmas now. So uh, winter, I should say, holiday stuff. And I don't have the plate here, but I have a nice picture of this guy. This is a little gingerbread guy. And we're gonna do that today. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do. If you want to snapshot this, these are the supplies you're gonna need, which is Green Acres, Lime Ricky, Pumpkin Pie, Rockin' Red, um, Polar Bear, and Black Lab. Four of these colors you'll need in a fun rider, as you can see, and you need two brushes, which is a number six and a number 10. I have the Moderna brushes, and you'll also need the um, Snowstorm. Okay, so that's about it. So let's get started with this fun little cute project. Okay, so we're all set to go. Um, the first thing you're gonna do is take this pattern. You are gonna trace Put a piece of just regular tissue paper over it. Trace your pattern with a pencil um, onto the tissue paper. Then you're going to take the tissue paper and you're going to line it up on your plate. The tissue paper is nice because do you see how it curves into the plate? If you had um, a different type of tracing, um, you know, sometimes that Sorrel paper or different paper, it's hard to see through it. It's hard to see, you know, to push it into the piece. Um, this wraps around anything. It's just very easy method to use. So I'm going to line this bottom up with the plate here. And then I'm going to take a marker. You can use, um, you're probably best to use a water-based marker. Um, a lot of times I use this, a Sharpie marker. Um, some people have problems with it. I never have a problem with the Sharpie marker, so I still kind of use that a lot. Um, but you can use a water-based marker. This is the water-based marker. This is just a Crayola water-based marker. So I can show you how this goes on too. Um, so you just want to trace your pattern. Remember, this is going to fire out in the kiln, this marker that's bleeding through. So you don't have to worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's more of a guide to use. Make sure it's going, it's bleeding through, okay, on the other side. Because before you keep trace the whole thing and then find out it never went through. Um, the Sharpie marker is kind of low on ink, so I guess it wasn't going through that good. So I switched to this one. Okay, so... Let's trace your pattern and we'll go from there. Now, I'm tracing this middle piece, but I shouldn't have. You don't have to trace this inside yet because you're going to have to trace that after um, because you're going to cover that whole thing. So you want to trace it on later. But you do want to mark each spot where you're going to have the darker green. That's all you have to do for now. Okay. I didn't even have to trace the face, so you don't have to trace the eyes. You're really going to be painting over this whole thing anyway. So um, so now what you want to do is take uh, pumpkin pie, squeeze some of that out because I'm going to do that first. And I'm going to use my number 10 brush and um, see how I'm just going to go over that so you don't have to trace that part. So you actually don't have to trace these lines either yet because I'm going to I'm gonna first just apply the whole um, Lime Ricky, so. Now, I'm gonna apply one coat. Now, the way I do this to get, I like my colors to be nice and solid. And the only way to get them solid is to do, you know, three or four coats. But what I like to do is I put a coat of, I do this a lot, I put a coat, I brush on my first coat. That's what I do, just to get where I gotta go with it. 
Then a lot of times I'll take a sponge, a DM sponge, I wring it out. Don't, you know, leave a bunch of water in it. Like this and, whoops. And then I just take, then I just sponge on, sponge on the next coat. You just gotta be careful on your edges. But it's a gingerbread guy, so I kinda like the way he looks sponged on. So anyway, rather than just doing them with paintbrush, I don't wanna see any marks, any brush marks. You usually don't with a lot of coats, but it's best to, um, if you sponge it on, it comes out really nice. So you're gonna sponge a coat on. You're gonna let that dry, okay? That's my second coat. And it's gonna take only a couple of seconds to dry, maybe a minute or two actually, and then it'll be good. Um, so now, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna take my Lime Ricky, pour a little of that out, and I'm gonna take uh, the same brush, I'm gonna rinse it off, and then I'm gonna take my Lime Ricky, and I'm gonna put a coat of the green on the top part of the hat. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the green a coat on the bottom part of this scarf. Because you wanna cover that whole thing. We'll put the lines in later because that's what we're gonna use the fun writer for. We won't have to do a lot of coats. Now it's pretty quick and simple. Now that card's dry already, so I'm gonna go put a second coat on. You can see it's pretty quick. Uh, I should have my glasses on so I don't go out of the lines. <laughs> Second coat down here on the scarf. Now do it light, you know, make sure you have a light touch because the more, if you put it in rough, it's just going to pull up the color underneath. I'm going right to the edge of my plate because I want it to go off the edge, this, this the green scarf, okay? Now, the reason I use a round brush when I'm brushing on, because it's less likely to pull it up. If I use a square brush like this, and I do this, it's just gonna pull up the color underneath because it's got hard edges. So you don't wanna use that. Just use, you're better off, the best thing is these round brushes because they're nice and soft. They won't pull it up. Now I'm putting my third coat on already because it's, it's just instantly drying. They do dry pretty quick. See, nice and soft. Now, we're going to have to let that dry. Well, actually, look at how quick this dries. See, it's already dry enough to put another coat on. So I'm going to put, I've got three coats on. I'm going to put one more thin coat. See, I don't put it on very heavy. So I'm going to put one more thin coat, just a quick coat to, I just want to make sure it's nice and solid. It won't be too thick because I'm not putting on thick, heavy coats. I'm just putting on thin, you know, I put three to four thin coats on all the time. And I never get any crawling. Um, so I, it usually goes on pretty good with that. If you put it on really, really heavy, you might, but I don't usually put it on heavy. So so that's it. it you need very, probably not even an ounce of, of paint. I probably used a quarter of an ounce for the green. Um, I'm gonna rinse this again. Now I'm gonna, I actually I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna go back to this, um, to this uh, pumpkin pie. You're also gonna need 
The same thing, we're gonna sponge another coat of pumpkin pie on here, because we want that nice and heavy too. You know, nice and solid, I should mean. I say heavy, but I mean solid, not really heavy, but. Make sure you get all your spots. Just be careful now when you're going down towards the bottom here. You know, you, you see how I'm doing, how I'm doing this so that, um, you know, I'm just kind of going right around the edge. This rounded edge of the sponge works really nice. So you just gotta go slow when you get down to here because you don't want to get it all over your green. You're gonna have a line there anyway, so it won't be too bad even if you get a little on there. Now that's probably good for the orange. I'm gonna go and, you know, that gives us one, two, three coats. So, but I'm just gonna put a little extra there. One little thinner, thin, you know, just another little quick coat, not heavy sponged on, but just a little bit. Not even going right, right to the edge, okay? So that's it. So, so far, this is what I got. Now, while I still got some, um, while I still got some of this pumpkin pie in my sponge, I'm going to add a tiny bit of rock and red, just a little bit. I've got a little speck there. Okay. Now, I know the cheek areas are going to be over here. So, how I did this, if you look at my paper here, you see how it's a little rosy over here and over here? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Dip that into, now, do you see that I dipped it right in with the with the um, pumpkin pie still on the sponge? I dipped it into the red, and I'm going to just put a little red over in this cheek area, okay? Just kind of make it a circular. It doesn't have to be, it's not on heavy. It's just like kind of in the area. I'll hold this up and show you. It's not heavy, it's just kind of, it'll blend right in, but it will give you just enough in the cheeks, see? Okay, so it's you can see it's not on very heavy, it's just kind of thin. So that's drying. Um, okay, now, you will have to let the plate dry a little, so, but while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to take, this is what I need a little bit more of the red for, because I'm going to take the red, and I'm going to take the smaller brush, the number six brush, now I just got a little bit around the edge here. So you do have to paint that fill that in. So you're gonna go around your hat. You know, you're just gonna go around stuff on this because it's not much of the red to do. I'm gonna go over the edge of my plate. I'm not doing the back side because this is gonna get dipped into clay glaze. So I don't need to do the, the back side. It's just gonna stay white. Okay, so that's it. Just go around your edge. The only thing that's a little different and tricky is is how I did the the little um, um, white um, thing rim around the hat. I'm going to show you that because I did that with snowstorm. You can paint 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 it plain white, but I did it with snowstorm, and I put a little texture into it. So I'm going to show you how to do that when we get there. It's probably the last thing I'm going to do on this plate, so. Okay, so you know you got one coat. Now you're gonna go back and put another coat on this red. You can't really sponge the red on at all because not on here because you'll get it all over everything. That's why I'm actually using this smaller brush. But you can see it dries instantly. Use a nice little soft brush, like a, this number six brush is perfect. Everything's perfect in my paint world, so just so you know. When I say everything's easy, <laughs> it's because I say everything's perfect in my little paint world here that I have. Go to the other side. Now this project can go anywhere from, uh, you know, half an hour you can make it 
you can definitely make this into an hour or an hour and a half class for sure. You can drag it out a little bit because, you know, it does take a little bit of, um, a little bit of time. You know, some people work faster than others. I know I'm going along pretty quick here. Okay, now that's my third coat, I think. You should mark them down because you do forget, tend to forget the coats. I'm going to go one more coat. Like I said, they're nice thin. It's four thin coats is what I'm putting on. Four quick thin coats. It's not a lot to do. They go on pretty, pretty good and pretty fast. It might be a nice take home project for people to do because, um, Guess what? It doesn't take hardly any paint. This is probably a quarter of an ounce, too, on the red. It's just very little paint. You don't need much at all. You've seen what I squirted out. I probably squirted out probably a quarter of an ounce. And look at what I'm using. I mean, I still got... I'm done, basically, and I got still got this much left on my palette. So I squeezed out way more than I needed. So if you're sending this home, you just need very little paint. On, all, on any of these colors, okay? Now, we've got that done. So, now when this is when this is dry enough, it's gonna dry for a couple more minutes. When it's dry enough, then you can trace the rest of your pattern on because then you can go to town with that and that will be um, pretty quick and simple. I'll show you that too in a minute when it's dry. Okay, now that it's dry, Good old hair dryer works all the time. Now you're going to put this back, line this back up on your pattern. Line your pattern back up on your plate. Okay, get your marker again. Um, now you can chase everything else. I'm going to chase the eyes over again because I didn't do that before. Now, it's up to you whether you want to trace this. You're only tracing the facial area now, and you can trace on the um, scarf, too. But it's up to you whether you want to trace this um, this thing going around here because it's pretty easy to just do with the Fun Rider. But, you know, if you feel like you want to trace that, too, um, I'm going, going to do that just because, um, of course, I just moved it. Did I move it? Okay, so, like I said, make sure it's lined up right. Okay, now, let me see. I moved it too much, so I am not going to trace that. I'm just going to put it on after. So, but if you need to trace that, you can. And you do, I'm going to line up my green, though, and I'm going to trace this because I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn it upside down. It's easier to do. Okay, so now... I'm going to put these lines in, but you're not going to know which one is which. You're going to do every other one. But what I do is while I'm tracing the pattern, I mark a dot or something on this, on each, every other one. So I'll show you. It just makes it so much easier than having to think of, you know, because if you, if you end up doing like, um, you're having a light green and then dark green, then all of a sudden you did another dark green or whatever. You don't want to do that. So it's easy just to mark them because they're all just straight, you know, little lines. So see what I did? So each one that has a dot, oh, that one too, each one that has a dot is going to be the dark green. Okay, just so you don't mess them up, because I've done that before. Um, okay, so now we got we got everything traced on here except for the outside of the line. So now, the the little um, icing on the on the face. So, but what I'm gonna do is, um, I think I'm gonna take the the, the um, green acres first now in the fun writer, and this is the top of my plate. So I'm gonna work from the top down because it's easier for me. So now I'm just going to draw some lines. Now you can, I, I'll put these on the pattern actually, the lines. So I'm going to do these lines, which kind of just go straight across. Like I said, you can trace this on the pattern too so that you can um, put them on easier than if you just, you know, 
wing it, but I just, you know, can do this. So I'm just going to go across here. Um, I'm just putting a few lines and they don't have to, like I said, they don't have to be perfect either. And try not to dig into your pottery with this, um, with the barrel of the, um, the tips. Okay. You don't want to dig in. So hold your thing sideways. Don't hold it up straight. Hold it sideways and, and do this so that you're, you're kind of gliding along the plate. Okay. So it looks like on this pattern, I wave them. So you can wave them or do them straight either way, but just, you know, just put the lines in there. Now I'm going to put that aside and because I'm going to work my way down a little bit, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the red nose. I'm going to fill up. Uh, actually, I'm going to do the black eyes. Now make sure you shake your fun writer down too. So the paint is down here and you don't get any air bubbles. Now I'm going to paint this whole thing in black. And fill this whole circle in okay same thing try not to dig up the paint because it's not it's not as dry as it could be and the more wet it is the easier it is to clog up the paint and dig dig down into the colors with the the fun writer tip see so i'm just kind of floating it out on top not not digging or scraping i'm just kind of floating the color on the top layer gonna be a little thick but that's okay this is how I do a lot of my pieces and I don't have any problems with them um, you can brush this on a couple of coats if you want uh, two coats of the black are probably sufficient on the eyes if you don't want to use the fun writer sometimes I outline it and then fill it in Now it's up to you whether you want to put the eyelashes in or not. We're going to put the white highlights in at the end. Um, but if you want to put, if you want to put some eyelashes on, I'm going to do that and show you what I do. Um, now on this particular thing, this picture, you'll see that the eyelashes, I got a few down here. I always usually do that and I put a few up here coming right off um, the top of the eye so in that I do backwards okay so I don't face it to me and try to do it this way I face it backwards so that it just makes it easier to make the line and I just kind of go thin and I go the first one is right at the top and then I go down a little bit and that's it and then when I do the bottom I turn it this way and I kind of do those off to the side also They're on the pattern if you want to trace them on, but I find it easier to just do it that way. Okay, now that's done. Um, I'm going to fill in the nose with rock and red. Same thing. Now I got a bigger tip on the rock and red. Um, you notice on the black fun writer, because it, I'm going to outline it and stuff, I have the yellow tip on, which is the fine tip. But on this, um, the rock and red here, I got the regular tip on because I'm, you know, when you're doing fill in work, it is easier with the, the pink tip. Some people have a harder time controlling it, especially if they're doing eyelashes and stuff. So, so now just fill this in. Maybe put the outline in for us, like I do. And then just filling it in nice and light. Okay, just glide it along. I sound like Bob Ross. Just glide it along. Put it on nice and smooth. You can see it looks it's perfect. And I don't need more than because I'm using the fun writer. I don't need more than another more than one coat. So that's what's nice about using the fun writers. Now I'm gonna put in the um, eyebrows. And I mean, I could do those in white because it's a gingerbread guy, but I'm going to do them in black and I'm going to do the mouth in black. That could also be in white, but I, I did it. In, I chose to do it this way. Now, this doesn't have to be a perfect line, this mouth, because I kind of waved it a little. So when you wave stuff, the good thing is you don't have to do a perfectly straight line. It's, at all, it's a lot easier to do a wavy line than it is to do a straight line. So 
why not wave it when you can? So that's what I do. Now this bottom piece here, I fill in with the black. Now don't do this bottom piece yet because we're gonna put a little bit of red there, okay? So you're gonna put that down. Let's see, what else do I gotta do here? Um, I'm gonna take the green and I'm gonna turn it upside down because it's easier for me to do it this way, like I said. And shake it down and I'm gonna fill in my green here okay my this is the green acres i'm going to go right to the edge of the plate and i'm going to fill this in with the fun writers now you can do this with the brush also but i chose to do it with the fun writer because it's quick it's easy um for me some people don't like to work with the fun writers because the hand ain't steady or what for whatever reason you can use a small brush and take your time with it if you want to do that. I like the fun writers because it's like coloring for me, so sort of relaxing. Same thing with the scarf here. I'm not making straight lines. I'm kind of waving it a little because it's a scarf. I can do that. Now see, I don't have to, because I mocked each one, I mocked each one with the dot, now I know right where to go and I don't have to think about, oh, which one is, where do I put the next one? Or It just makes it easier. Because I'm telling you, I've messed them up before. Okay. Done with the green. Now, the only thing we have left is to outline him. Oh, and, oh, and we're gonna put the, I'm gonna put this on now. So this is the polar bear. We're gonna put the icing around the eyes. Now be careful you don't rub this down here, okay? So you wanna, you wanna put in your, um, the little um, curl here. Put a tip on that. So I'm going to put in the curl. Now, if you traced it, you can just follow your lines. If you didn't trace it like me, I am just going to move it along. Just wave it. It doesn't have to be a perfect wave. This one looks actually better than my tracing. So, And, I, and a lot of times, I think I've done this in other videos, in order to do something like this where I'm above it and I'm not touching, actually hardly touching the piece and I'm just kind of waving this over the piece, I support my wrist. That's the way I do this. If I just did like this without supporting my wrist, my hand gets shaky. But if I support my wrist, this goes, goes along a whole lot better. Just hold your wrist when you're doing it. And then it goes over nicely. I'm barely touching the plate when I do this. Sometimes it gets a little too thick. You can fix it later if you have to. Stay to sort of the edge of the, the young gingerbread guy's um, face. Stay to the edge of the face when you're doing this. You can go right over where the pink blush is. Or you cannot put the icing around it at all because some of them don't have icing around it. I just think it makes it a little bit cuter. Okay, so that's done. So let's see. Now, all I have to do now is the outline. Now, if you see the photo um, of the, you'll see the actual plate, this plate, actual plate I did is on online. Is, you're gonna have the picture of anyway. Um, but this here, um, you can see I outlined it. I outlined everything except for around this area where the, where the snowstorm is. So I outlined everything else. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and then we'll put the white highlight. But right now I'm going to show you how to do this little, um, the little pink around in the lip. Okay, that's what makes him really cute because it looks like he has a lower lip. So you're going to take, now I use, I mean, I usually use the number six brush for this. Um, if you want to use a smaller brush, you can. Um, it's just, it's it takes a second to do it. 
Uh, let me see if I can get the camera a little bit closer. I wanted you to see this. So you're going to wet your, your brush. You're going to you're gonna wet your brush and you're going to dab it off just a little bit. Get some of the water off. Then you're going to slide the side of the brush. You see how the brush is kind of flattish, okay? That's still the round brush. But I'm just going to use the side of the brush, actually just the tip of the brush. So it looks like this. And then... I'm going to go right where this, be careful you don't touch any of this now. So I'm going to support on the dry area here. I'm going to support this hand with my little um, pinky finger. And I'm going to take the edge of that color and put it on that, that area of the mouth right there to make that little pink area. See, now you got that pink area. And what this does I'm going to show you this again, but you don't have to do two coats. What this does is just put, it puts that, puts that pink right there. And then the rest is like just water. So that's going to dry and you're only going to see the pink. It's the perfect way of doing a little lip, a little thing like that. Uh, so he looks like he has a little mouth. Okay. So now I'm actually going to bring this. I brought that the mouth down a little bit more too because I kind of want it to be right there. Um, now, before I touch that because it's still wet, now I'm going to go start outlining. So I might start at the top here and I'm just doing this kind of, um, let me back this up a little bit. So now I'm doing this, I'm just going around the edge of everything. I'm not doing a perfect line. Just kind of bringing it along, dragging it along. Okay, now I don't have to go around this area because we're not going to do that. So we're going to go down to here. Now you see that I, I use my finger to hold for everything. I don't just go like this. I use this support finger to do this. And now I'm going to go right up here. You really only need one coat unless you want your line thicker. Sometimes I do double lines because I just, um, sometimes, you know, I just, I do double lines sometimes because I think it looks cute. And this here, um, it's the, the thinner fun writer tip. So it's going to be thin lines. I'm going to go a little bit of lines over here. Now it's still a little damp, so I'm going really light. I'm not scraping into the piece. If you send in this type of project home, maybe you don't send it with fun writers. If it's a kid, I think you should send maybe brushes. They might be easier with a brush. Um, so that's it. You can see how I'm dragging it along the whole outline. Okay, now... Now I'm going to take the white fun writer because I want to put a highlight in and I'm going to put it first. I'm going to take this black and I'm, I forgot this. Now that this is dry, you want to put a nice little thin line across the mouth there. Okay. So that's going to give it that little cutesy look. Um, you're going to take this, the fun writer and um, you're going to put a dot on the eye. Okay. Then I put a teeny dot right under it. I just do that because I think they, it makes the eyes cuter. So I got a bigger dot and a teeny dot. See? And then I do this. I take um, um, this. I make this little, um, I don't know what you call it. It's sort of like a comma. And I put here. And I'm going to show you that. I start over here and then just pull it up to a point. So that's how I do my eyes. And I'm going to also put a highlight on the nose which I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put like a dot and then kind of pull the dot out to make a little, little comma mark. Like, I don't know what you call it, but okay. Now, um, now we're going to go to the snowstorm. I think he's basically done the face and stuff to the, to, except for the snowstorm. So I'm going to take the snowstorm and I am going to pour a little of the snowstorm out. So let me just clean up um, this, clean some paint off here. 
my place is covered. Okay, so I've got a spot here where I'm going to take, um, it's easy, I can do it right from the jar if I want, but yeah, maybe I will do it right from the jar. So I'm going to do it right from the jar. So I'm going to pull some out of the jar. Make sure you shake this up and stir it up when you get the snowstorm. And I'm going to just, you can see how I'm putting this on kind of thick, okay? So it's a little bit heavy. I can go, you can go over your, your, your gingerbread color in your green a little bit, okay? It, it's not going to hurt it. It's going to cover it. So you can see, this is the number 10 brush, round brush, and I'm kind of loading it on. You can see what I'm doing here. Kind of just kind of blobbing it on. I can turn the other side, get some off of there. Loading it up again, because you want it on, like I said, you want it on a little heavy. And make sure you go to, right to your edge, like right, touch your green, okay? You want to touch your green. Don't do it on the inside and try to leave a line there, because you're not, you're not outlining this spot. So you just want to put, it's just supposed to be fluffy, furry stuff, so... Now, when I get to this edge here, of course, I got to do it. I got to be a little more careful. So I'm going to go this way. Okay, so you can see it's kind of fluffy. That's what the snowstorm does. Now, while it's still wet, I am going to take my toothpick, and you don't have to do this either. You can just leave it regular snow, and I'm going to make little marks in it. Okay, like. Now, you, you definitely need a sponge or something to wipe, you know, make sure you wipe the toothpick off, okay, because it's going to just get clogged up with, with this stuff. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do these little swirly things in the um, snowstorm. It just gives it a little more texture, you know, I'll hold the plate up again, you can see it. Um, you can put any kind of marks in this. You don't, it doesn't even have to be swirls. I just think it makes them look less snowman or Santa Claus looking. I wanted them to really look more like a gingerbread guy. and So I wanted to add a little stuff to them. Now, I don't have one here, but I'm going to show you what, I, what else you can add to it if you want to. Okay, now, so you can see how, see how I just put those little swirls in there? Now, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to show you this. Now, you can do this. Now, it's up to you what you want to do. It. You can take a little round biscuit. I don't have one here, but I, it's a small one, and put it there. Do the snowstorm on it. Don't fire it there, but you can glue it on after so it's half hanging off the piece like this, like if you wanted to do this too. I have a little hot biscuit that I do have here as I wreck my piece. I do have that here. So instead of a, uh, a round ball of just white ball, you can also do just like a hot biscuit and you can actually put that right there so that, um, you know, you'd have to glue it on, but you could glue it on. So it kind of hangs off the plate a little bit. Okay. I think that would be cute. Um, you know, as you can see, even if I show you on the picture, on the photo, see, you could put um, this little bisky that just sits there like that off the plate. It, it would be cute. So that's up to you. But um, anyway, that's all for this guy. I don't think I've forgotten any. Oh, I did forget something. Here we go. The snow. So squeeze out some. Um, you want to squeeze out a little polar bear probably more than I need and you want to get your toothbrush and to me this makes the piece if I'm doing a winter piece and it, it might be just because I love snow I don't know but I like to sprinkle it up 
I like to put the snow on it, and it's just polar bear. Uh, that one, I put a little much on that one, but so you got to be a little bit careful. But that's it. So it looks like a snowstorm. He's in a snowstorm. See how cute that is, though. Uh, this one don't have quite as much snow on it, but you know the snow it goes where it goes when you got the um, you know when you got the toothbrush. So you know just be careful with it. But um, there you go. There he is. He's finished. Um, Dip them and fire them to an 06 and you're all set. So that's it. See you later, guys.